Zero accounting software 2023 bank rules. Split expense into two accounts and tracking categories. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this, or ideally some combination between the two, giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might wanna come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. We're gonna duplicate those tabs to put our reports in, right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it. We're gonna right click on the tab up top and duplicate again. Let's go back to that middle tab and open up our favorite reports, the accounting dropdown and the balance sheet. Tab into the right, the other favorite report, accounting dropdown and the income statement. You never get tired. You never get tired of the favorites, right? You can play them over and over again. And then, they, and then people try to force you to watch some new thing like a Disney movie or something. You're like, no, no, that's trash. I'm sticking with the good stuff, man. I'm sticking with the fit. And we're going to hit the January to December of 2023, or uh, 22, that is, and updating. Let's go back to the first tab now, back to the first tab and go to the account dropdown and we're looking at the bank accounts. We're putting in our more sophisticated rules this time. We've got our bank feeds in place. We're looking at our checking account and let's look at the reconcile tab. We've been constructing our financial statements from the information through the bank feeds as much as we can using normally fairly straightforward rules such as we're paying the gas company or something. So we've got whatever the SoCal gas company, for example, goes to the account of uh, gas expense or utilities. But sometimes it's more complex than that. This time we're gonna imagine that we want to be breaking out an expense to two separate categories. Now this could happen for a couple different reasons. For example, you, you might be in a system where you have uh, two locations, two different locations, and your expenses, you would like to say, well, I'm paying this bill, but I wanna be breaking that bill out on a percentage basis for the two locations. You might have that. If sometimes it comes into play if you have a not-for-profit organization where you might be breaking uh, your expenses out to not profit you know, categorizations for like a form of class tracking uh, ty type of thing, or I should say kind of like fund accounting type of thing. Uh, so what we would like to do then is we're gonna, we're gonna go to the, I'm gonna go to the tab to the right, 
and we're going to imagine that we have some expenses on the income statement. And what we would like to do is break out the expenses. We're going to do it in two ways. We're going to make one, two separate accounts, which we're going to imagine are broken out by location. And we'll also see if we can make two categories, tracking categories that will be on uh, the income statement up top. So we can, we can break it out that way as well. And then we can use our super cool edit uh, layout tab over here to expand or collapse or format further our report. Now we added the uh, tracking categories in a prior presentation. Just Let's just recap on how to do that. Let's go to the first tab. If you wanted to add those tracking categories, accounting dropdown, advanced stuff, we're going into the advanced, not too bad, but it is advanced. We're going into the, the range of the expert here. So we're going into, we had the tracking categories. If you add a location, or a tracking category here, then the top part is the tracking category name. And then you can put multiple things that you're tracking under that category name. For us, we have the locations. I'm just gonna say location one, location two, and then I have NA or not applicable, neither location. I want to be able to assign a location to every, every transaction if I'm using this kind of strategy usually, because that will allow me to, to kind of catch errors oftentimes. If I wanted to add another category, I can add another one, which would give us another tab over here, but that's the general outline with uh, those categories. Now let's add some accounts to our chart of accounts. Accounting dropdown, I'm gonna go into the chart of the accounts I'm going to add new two new accounts, which are just going to be test accounts. They're going to be expenses. Let's go over to the expense side just to make it a little bit easier to see. And I'm going to make another one just calling it 6060. Let's say 6060. Add an account. It's going to be called 6060. And it's going to be an expense type of an account. And the name is simply going to be test. Test expense expense so test expense and i'm going to put location one and then i'm going to make another one 6065 test expense location two so i'm going to save that and let's add another one add another thank you may i have another 6065 it's going to be an expense and it's going to be test expense location two and we will add that one. So now if I scroll down, we've got these two uh, locations. When I add information to these items, they will show up on the income statement as two separate locations, right? We're, we're gonna start putting things in here, two separate locations, which I can then group together using my edit layout and make a subcategory for them. And I can also break them out by category location up top. So we're actually gonna do double duty, having them broke out by account and by tracking category. And then uh, I, that gives us like a double check, uh, a double verification. And then we can modify that format for external reporting purposes. All right, let me show you what I mean. We're gonna go to the first tab. Let's go to the bank rule side of things and accounting drop down back into the bank accounts and let's go into the check-in account to check it out i'm going to go into the reconcile on the reconcile and let's go down to those items that we that i've added a couple items down here so i just added these market daily market items so let's say we need to we need to break these out by location uh let's do it we're going to do it like uh, 60 40. So I'm going to hit the drop down. Let's make a rule for it, create a rule, and it's going to be a creative rule, a created, we're going to create a creative rule. So at least a little bit more creative. It's going to be any conditions met. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hit the drop down. We want to say uh, any text, this part is the same as our other rules. If it has daily market in it, you want, you want that. I'm going to make a new vendor just like we normally would for that all right and then down here and we have our our percentage breakout now note 
you could break out by dollar amount up top, uh, which might be useful. So like uh, this could be useful, for example, if if you, you want to make uh, a breakout that's going to be a fixed dollar amount to a particular account and possibly the rest of it goes to another account over a certain threshold or something like that. But I think oftentimes it's more likely that you can have the percent breakout down here and you can say this is the expense that I'm breaking out, you know, 60, 40 by location. So I can I can do that nicely down here and say this is going to be the test expense, test expense location one. And I'm also added the location field. This will only be here if we added those location tracking. And I'm going to say this is 60. Whoop. I'm going to say, hold on a sec, location one, and then the percent is 60, and then location, and then I'll add a new here, and then we want uh, uh, location test expense location two, and this will be going to location two, and this of course will be the 40, and that should add up to 100%. So we've we've done double duty here, meaning we're breaking it out both by two separate accounts and by two separate locations, which will break it out by column. That'll give us a double check verification, and then we can modify our reports if we want to do that. Although you don't need to do both, you might just use the location tracking, which would break out by column. So I'll show you that in a second. So we'll say, uh, let's hit the drop down. I'll say the reference. I'm going to say this applies to all accounts and save it all right let's go ahead and add these in so i'll go through and say let's say this one looks good let's the rule has been applied and MUI b to the end so so here's all the rules been applied to all of these items all right so i'll just add those in very nice MUI b in all right so then i'm going to go to the balance sheet and update these, of course, would decrease the check-in account, but the more interesting uh, component we're going to be looking at is the income statement. So here's our income statement. Now, if you just turned on the class tracking or the, the, the tracking categories, then you're going to want to refresh the screen with this button or possibly simply open up another income statement. And you should be able to see then a new field up top, your filtering field. So now we can go into our filtering field. I can update the report, filter the fields, and I and I often would select all of these. I'm going to select all of them and say, okay, update, and okay, there it goes. So now we have it here. So now I've got location one, location two, and unassigned. So if I scroll down uh, to these items, there they are. There's location one, location two. So we've done, this is what I mean by the double duty, the double verification. We put everything in location one and track them both by the account location one and by the category of location one in a separate column. Everything in location two is tracked by account and by category and nothing has been unassigned. And that's why I would always have everything assigned to every transaction if I can for most purposes of using this so that if anything is unassigned, you can drill down on whatever is unassigned and properly assign it out. Also, if I had something safe in here, that wouldn't make any sense because now it's in location one by account, but location two up top. So it looks like there'd be an error in data input, which I can easily see with this kind of double check factor and I can properly put it into the proper account. So you don't really need to do that double verification. It would probably be the easiest to remove the two accounts if you don't want to do that and just break out by uh, the locations up top. That's another format you can do. That's probably better than breaking out by these two locations because it's often useful to see everything by column so you can see the subtotals if you're breaking everything out by location. Now I can also add subcategories to these locations by going to the edit layout tab down here and grouping them this is and notice up top the structure that zero has put in place you can you can adjust the structure by adding and deleting columns if you so choose so i'm going to go down and say i could select this one hold down control and select this one make a group i'm going to group them and then i'm going to call that group just call it 
test expenses. And so tab out of that. And so now it put it into a group. I can, I can collapse the group, but let's first see it in a grouped format so I can update this. And now my report has more detail in it. This would be similar to, to subcategories in like a QuickBooks Online, but it actually gives you a lot more flexibility really. So now it breaks out here. So now I can still see it by location in both ways. And it gives me my totals and you know the total over here for both of them in the total column. Now this might be good for internal purposes for me to double check those. And then I can collapse this category for external reporting. So I can just break it out by the locations up top by going to the edit tab. And then I can say, let's go ahead and collapse this and then update. And so now for external reporting, I just have those two broken out up top. And, uh, and now I can see the, uh, the test. That's the income side. I'm down here, the test expense in one, one line item broken out by the two locations. So pretty, pretty neat, the bank rules. Now the bank rule will apply going forward and you can kind of automate everything in that format with a little bit more complexity and the bank rules adding in multiple accounts and your tracking options by column. Note that you can also track that location tracking on the balance sheet, but the balance sheet gets a little bit more tricky and the default is to filter each column. So I can filter like just location one and you can filter each column. But usually people are thinking of the income statement when they use this tool. Also note that you might be able to adjust a column by column breakout using the, this layout tool, adding another column, but I don't wanna get too far into that right now because that's not really our point of focus. Most of the time when you're using this, this kind of uh, uh, tool, you're, you're generally focused on the breaking the income statement out, uh, performance statement by column such as location or department or whatever.